I need a million dollar bills Making cash, I get the chills Pick it up, watch it rise Stop barking dreams in my eyes Welcome to Banana Bread Trade We're here to talk about another trade plan that we have coming forth this week. Today is 7-14-2024. It's Sunday. Market's just been open for about almost two hours now. And we're making our plan for this coming week, uh, mostly Monday. And then we'll see kind of like as the levels progress, we'll keep updating as we do. But for right now, let's just talk about what we're looking at right now going into the week as well as recover or recap what we talked about um, last week and some of the trades we took on Thursday and Friday because obviously I was on the road, but we did take a couple trades. Trade number one that we took Thursday, that was a violent sell-off day. If you guys remember, we had this violent turbo sell that just went nothing but straight down. It was a very, very intense profit-taking event. If anyone was there Thursday, you know what I'm talking about. If you clicked sell, you made money that day. But it's honestly pretty tough to click sell when we're already 500 points. You know, we, we sold basically 500 points straight down, consolidated a little bit, and then continued almost another 200 points straight down from there. It was a very, very gnarly sell. And I actually got caught up a little bit in that. We had sold off about 500 points. We hit us some consolidation. And we were wicking this 50 or 2050, 20. 555 level. Um, we had those singles there. Um, everything looked good. I had all the signals to go along there. And I actually hit this in the trade of eight account, which is a little sad. Let me see if I can pull that up here. Um, I did hit in the trade of eight account and we did take a loss on that. We ended up losing about 170 bucks on the day, but that's okay. Overall on the week, we were still, um, here we go. Overall in the great week, we were still plus 50 bucks, which is kind of a bummer. We just erased most of the other trade we took last week we only had like two trades i know it shows a lot of contracts here but i don't we didn't take that many i think it includes the fees and everything with every single trade but here we are we only actually took two trades both of them were two contracts one was a winner one was a loser um we had a minus 215 with one and then we made about 30 bucks on the other one so overall last week <laughs> ended up only being 50 bucks on the small account so that's kind of a bummer and what was even more upsetting is we were actually green on that trade that we took on Thursday and I let it go red. I was, we were pretty comfortably green. I think we were up a hundred bucks at the time. But like I said, I was kind of on the road. I was really confident in that long. We had everything we needed to be long in that situation. So I was just like, yeah, we'll leave it. Just let it work. I come back to my phone a little bit later and we've been stopped out. I was like, oh wow, that's pretty... It's pretty intense. So, um, yeah, that sell got us. That's fine, though. Like, that's going to happen sometimes. Sometimes you're going to take an L. We had the right precautions in place to make sure that we still had an account at the end of the day. It's a very small loss with regards to the account size. So, one more good trade. We make up for it, and we're even more green on the situation. So, um, not worried. Just a small L, small bump in the road. But losses are going to happen. We're, we got a day like that. Losses are definitely going to happen, but nothing that I'm going to throw my trade plan out the door for because I know in the long run, if I keep playing the same trades with the same risk, that we're going to be profitable. So, yeah, shit happens. Just kind of a bummer that it was only the second or third trade of the account, but whatever. So moving on, let's talk about what we had Friday. I didn't take any trades on the Trade of 8 account Friday, obviously, um, but we did have that non-farm payroll Friday morning pre-market. Um, let's go over here. We sold off, got below of our Keltner channels. We were also testing this 320 area, which we had talked about in Discord the night before, saying like, hey, a pullback to here would honestly be a pretty good long opportunity, especially after all the consolidation we had, a wick down to there would signal a great long. We didn't quite get the level, but I still got long anyway. My Apex account, I posted all that stuff down here somewhere. We had some conversations about it. But we talked about the 320 move, what we wanted. Um, and I ended up getting long on that. Took profit, had a nice, nice trade off of that. So overall, Friday was a great day. Um, and then I left and we went on. So now let's talk about wh where do we go from here? All right. So 
Moving on from then, we did retrace all the way up to about 750, which was where that sell-off kind of started on, um, on Thursday. We pulled down here to um, that 750 area. We wicked that POC. That was honestly a pretty great long setup. I did not take that long setup. I longed later because we kind of just flushed through it. I missed it, whatever. All of that stuff happened. We sold 750. That's where the sell-off really started. That's a level that probably should have held. It never reclaimed, and then it flushed out from there. We went back, and we retraced back up to there where the sell-off started, and then sold off a little bit more going into Friday evening, or Friday at close, I guess. And so the day has kind of been reset. The trade, or the, the map is completely reset now at this point. We went back to the balance, and now it's up to the market to, to decide if it's going to be bullish or bearish from here. We did have a little bit of a catalyst over the weekend. As you guys know, there was the Trump assassination attempt. Not really any volatility here right off the bat from market open regarding that. So it looks like, you know, we've had plenty of time to digest that whole situation. What I'm currently waiting for now is I want to see mar the market push one way or the other. And if we can get overextended on the Celts one way or the other, while also pushing one of these many levels that have been left behind, then I'll start looking for a trade back to the, you know, back to the average, the, the middle of the Celt, with a possibility of holding a runner to the next level in the traded direction. I have no bias going into tomorrow. I'm currently just kind of chilling and hanging out. Let's flip out of our uh, other charts here. I just got some full charts here. So this right here is in Q. Let's talk about this. We have a lot of singles that have been left over, like a lot. We have um, 820, 470-ish. We all the, all the way down here to 320-ish. Then we have 190 and this 160 level. This 190, 160 level, these two singles here, these are going to be very important because below them, we really have nothing. There's this really tight, choppy consolidation zone. But my opinion is if we were to break below this area here and not support and immediately reclaim, then we probably get a pretty violent sell all the way down to 19,540. And this is the level that we were talking about when we were here that we wanted that pullback to. Ended up going turbo bid instead. But this would complete that gap that we got when we rolled over to U contract. And this would kind of, you know, reset the tables. I would expect 19,540 to hold if we got down there, maybe push down a little, you know, 100 points into kind of this little consolidation area here, get a wick down in here somewhere. But overall, I would expect this little 100 point range right here. I would expect that to be the most bearish that we get. If we were to lose this area and flush down further, then things start to get really, really bearish. And I don't really pay attention to any of these levels down here because these levels were all put in prior to actual meaningful volume. As you can see, the volume days over here are pretty scarce. So these singles and uh, you know these, these POCs, they're not as meaningful. As you can see, they're pretty well spaced out as well. Um, I'm, I'm not as focused on those, um, just because, like I said, they were made before any meaningful volume was had came up. So this uh, one night... 2190 to 2160 area. This is going to be a very, very important pivot area for us to hold. Like I said, if not, I'd expect us to retrace that prior CPI all the way down to 19,540. If not, I expect us to have some really good range plays this week. And I say range plays because we have a lot of structure to work with here. I'd expect a lot of movement, you know, come down, go up, come down, go up, come down, go up. Stuff like that. Go clean up a lot of this structure that's been left behind. And we'll just play, you know, the, these nice uh, mean reversion plays back to the average of our Celts um, as we push these one way or the other. Now, flipping over to ES, we have kind of the same idea here. We have all-time high marked out. Kind of came back here to the average. We don't have as many levels, you know, within, you know, kind of each day's distance on ES compared to NQ, but there's still a lot of levels to play to the downside. So again, all of these, if we're pushing the lower Kelt as we're testing these levels, 
I would look to long one of these levels. But if we are not pushing the Kelt, and what I mean by that is this right here, duplicate panel, we'll make it big. I like to see these Kelts being pushed as we are testing these levels. These are called Keltner channels. Um, if we're pushing towards the bottom of a Keltner as we're testing one of these levels, and that's a great trade back to the mean reversion or a mean reversion trade back to our central EMA here or, you know, t withholding runners to our next level. But I like taking my core off, you know, just at, you know, the average of the move because, you know, price does not go strictly one way or the other. Although, you know, Thursday it did just go straight. It did just go straight. Um, but we eventually kind of balanced out. But Thursday is an anomaly type move. We don't have those moves a lot. Those are the days you need to be patient and not get liquidated on. Um, and just, you know, if if you're on the wrong side of a move like that, that, like I was on Thursday, I was on the wrong side, fully admit it. Um, those are the days where, you know, you just take your stop and be like, okay, I'm definitely wrong today. Market is getting wild. We'll wait for something to set up. If nothing else sets up, then we're just going to sit out. It's okay to chill when things aren't how your normal trading style fits. Trade a market that your trading style fits. Sit out when it's not in that situation. So, but normally, like I said, I like to play these Celts or at least look for these Celts, not trading them specifically, but using them for a gauge of um, risk to know, you know, if we're overextended on a move or not. So the same thing on ES, we'll be watching these levels as well. And I have a full write-up on all of these levels that we'll be watching and how I'm going to trade them in the Discord. If you go to the trading journal, go down to Goose. I wrote out every single level, what level it is, if you guys want the actual specifics on which each level is, and how I'll be trade, planning to trade this. Another note on ES as well is I'm watching the harmonic rotations on ES, and right now we've been kind of trading under 10. I know Thursday was a little bit of an anomaly, but when ES's harmonics are below 10, I usually trade strictly NQ, and that's just because the value of the NQ moves relative to your risk-reward ratio are going to be a little bit better, whereas ES isn't going to move as far in your favor or toward, you know, it might take two or three days to get to your target relative to just getting it in one day with ES. So the value of trading in Q is a little better. And one place you can check that is you come to our Discord, come down here to order, order Flow Labs Alerts, and every day we get an update from Order Flow Labs that tells you what the harmonic rotations are at. And as you can see in Q, Last one was at 62 points, which is actually a pretty big rotation for NQ. Normally, we're seeing around 40 to 50. Right now, we're at 62, so a little bit bigger. And then ES is actually on the low side at 7. That's very, very low for ES. So for me, I'm staying kind of away from ES just because the value of these moves is a little lower compared to, as you can see, NQ is very, very good right now. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, back to our charts. And then one last thing that I have as well is I'm very bullish on corn right now. Um, if we move over to the ticker ZC, we talked about it last week a little bit in Discord, and I really like the 400 level on corn. Um, we're coming into harvest season, you know, not, not late. We're not coming into harvest season quite yet, but we're very late in the growing season. So your supply is getting low, and this is kind of a worldwide situation as well is most of the world harvests around the same time, or at least within the central U.S., which is one of the biggest corn providers, you know, that makes, that matters for our market. Um, so yeah, 400 level is a very, very important level for corn. We talked about 400 needs to support. Um, Friday, we got a pretty good situation where I was able to get long in 405. I took profit at 411, and now I have a runner on on corn. And I'm looking to see this runner run to about 430, Possibly we'll see what happens at 430, but I'd really like to see us get to 450. Under 400, obviously, I will get stopped for break even on this trade. Um, I'm going to let my stop kind of stay where it is. I'll get break even on the trade, or we'll get 430, 450. Um, if we get above 430, obviously, I'll move my stop up. I expect a little bit of volatility there. Um, but that's what, I, that's what I like to see for corn right now. Intraday. You know, trading the Apex accounts, I'll probably be looking for longs above opening range. Um, that's what I would like to see on corn, at least um, when we're in a really bullish environment. Same thing with a bearish environment on corn. 
I look for really strong moves in that first hour, which makes that opening range trade really attractive. So that's also something I will definitely be watching this week. CL and Lean Hogs, um, crude oil, Lean Hogs. No real plays right now for me. Um, we're not far enough extended outside of their traditional ranges for me to be really excited about those. So nothing quite on those right now. But like I said, corn got to that 400 level. So it's really attractive to me right now. And then we have NQ as well. Um, Wait, waiting for it to kind of push these levels, but it needs to be overextended one way or the other. I would expect a little bit of ranginess this week, um, especially as we're kind of grinding these all-time highs and deciding, you know, if we're going to move one way or the other coming into election season. Who knows exactly, you know, what way the market is going to turn. It's been a pretty impressive bull market thus far. We could continue it, or like I said, we could rotate down and fill a lot of the structure. We'll see as it comes, and as it comes, we'll take our plays um, with the best risk opportunities at these levels if we're pushing, you know, the Celts. So that's all I have for today. Um, we'll see what happens tomorrow, and these levels are going to be valid for the entirety of the week. We may add some throughout the week, you know, as each day progresses, if we get more untested POCs and singles, you know, being produced, and as some get filled out, we'll keep you updated and keep you know waiting to see what kind of trade opportunities arise. So please stay safe this week, guys. Stay patient. Don't get chopped up this week. Like I said, there's a lot of structure out there on NQ. So expect a lot of back and forth action this week as a lot of this gets repaired and filled. Don't get yourself chopped up. Don't get trapped. Use your stops. Don't get liquidated. And let's have an absolutely...